Is your child defiant, independent, annoyingly inquisitive? After a long, hard day of following the rules, who wants to deal with troublesome kids? 49% of children suffer from Oppositional Defiant Disorder, or ODD. Symptoms of ODD include independent thought, rampant creativity, and failure to submit to authority. But now there's a solution. The good people at Pilfer can help you with their time-release, once-daily capsule, Compliacin. Your child won't be able to form his own opinions, let alone express them. It maintains your child's ability to go to a state-run school and perform simple tasks around the house. You won't have to worry about parenting, and the school won't have to deal with your kid asking questions. Compliacin. You'll go from this. Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! Quit telling me what to do! To this. Good morning, Mother. I love going to school. And this week we're learning all about how the government is our federal family and they're here to help us. Compliacin. Talk to your school psychiatrist and ask for it by name. We are just some modern day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 155th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more about this at BIPCOT.org. Oh my God, so many background noises. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're back. This is Jeremy. I am joined tonight by Shane. What's up, Shane? What's up? What's going on, man? Uh, Dave and Andre couldn't make it, so uh, it's going to be us. But we do have a guest, and uh, you probably heard some rustling around in the background. Yeah, but there's going to be some background noise going on. We had to use Skype tonight, unfortunately, but it's so we could get a very special guest on, a uh, returning guest, but it's been way too long since we've had him on the show. I was actually thinking about this earlier tonight and realizing I don't think we have actually successfully had him on since like the 11th episode, and we're now up to 155 because... The second time we tried to have this man on, we had a great episode lined up that was lost to the ether forever because it was the it was the ho- almost horrible recording experience. Three re- three separate uh, computers crashed, and we never got the episode on the air. Anyway, but he is back once again. Finally, we got him nailed down, Mister Luis Fernando Mises. What is going on, my friend? It has been way too long. Hey guys, yeah, I'm I'm excited to be back and. I- when you were mentioning what happened last time, I had completely forgotten about it. But yeah, that's true. That was. That was kind of a bummer. Yeah, Big we, bummer. Yeah, we managed to get you and Carlos Morales lined up on the same night, just on a freak thing. And it was Dave and I were so excited. <laughs> and we were like, because that was after Danilo, Danilo had left us. And we were like, oh, this is going to be a great show. And we had a great conversation. We went from like psychedelics to like we started with CPS and his stuff. And then we ended up on a psychedelic conversation. It was a great thing. And for some reason, my recording failed where my audio didn't pick up. Dave's recording failed where it was all sorts of glitchy. And Carlos, who was also recording because he wanted to record for his podcast at the time, uh, glitched as well. And we lost we lost pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that that is why the episode that actually came out that week has forever been titled 61 with an asterisk uh just like roger maris's home run record uh it just happened to work out that was their 61st episode that i got screwed up but anyway so anyway <laughs> well so yeah it's been way too long man what's going on with you it's been uh it's been forever yeah actually i just came back from houston you know about a few minutes ago i was still unpacking my backpack and you know the uh, goodies that I took, um, went to teach a seminar on uh, conflict resolution for a financial management and investment firm. So that's uh, that's always a lot of fun, you know, to, to get to travel and, and teach people skills to, to create a better world. So with the hopes that, uh, you know, we, we will certainly not need a, a state um, I, I totally believe, I'm a firm believer in the idea that whenever we are empowered and are knowledgeable, uh, we will look for answers within and we will con- collaborate with each other instead of having to, uh, you know, feel disempowered and, and 
like we can't do really things from you know uh, by by ourselves and we we require some mommy or daddy figure depending on what side of the spectrum you're on to take care of you and your work and all of that stuff so you know just doing my part yeah, man, that's great. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I've I've watched a lot of the you know a lot of the the video stuff that comes out about you know the type of work you do, and uh, I'm always ama- I mean, I'm, I've always been amazed, and I'm always like, yeah, that's definitely something not, not not something I'm not positive enough to do the stuff you do, but I'm glad you're out there to do it because <laughs> it's definitely uh, it's definitely needed because, like you said, I mean, uh, and I mean, people that so many people, I mean, I, for the longest time, I did I, I I didn't even realize it, you know, I I wasn't empowering myself in any way, and so many people are just lost in daily life and uh yeah it's uh it's it's mighty fine work that you were doing sir it's uh it's much needed so glad uh glad thank you're you. out there doing it thank you thank you yeah and uh we were we were talking briefly before the show because i know we we do have you for a limited time tonight so we're gonna we're gonna try to blast through up through, through some things uh as they come up but uh we shame mentioned quickly before the show uh, obviously, uh, on the night of this recording, we're now uh, what? We're less than a month away, I guess, from the uh, Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, which is coming up uh, at the end of June in, in uh, Delton, Michigan, uh, which we've mentioned a bunch of times on the show. And you're actually coming to speak this uh, this year, which is awesome because finally, after all these years, I'm going to get to meet you. <laughs> I've yeah, known, I'm excited. I've to known you, you on I've known you on like online for at least three or four years now, and uh, I, I, I busted your chops a couple of months ago because I found out you came to New York City and didn't t- like I didn't know until after you were already here and about to leave and I'm like dude you're 45 minutes away from me and I had no idea you were here what the fuck <laughs> um but uh you know so finally so uh I'm really stoked about that but uh Shane was mentioning the the talk you're gonna give and uh hopefully uh we, we, we you get, get in yeah excuse me get to get into that a little bit for us and uh tell us what tell, tell us what you got planned and uh how, how are you gonna help save the world uh for, for the uh confused anarchist over there <laughs> <laughs> that's certainly not how i i would uh um i guess put it you know um but i will tell you something like just to i guess counter what you're saying like they're zero confused actually the opposite is true because in the facebook page i said hey guys what do you want me to talk about you know gave a couple of uh suggestions and it was like 90 percent of the people voted for the whole inner journey for sustainable freedom and that's actually a little bit surprising you know um and and usually uh I, i've seen this you know broadly uh, when we wake up when we realize the whole lie of the state and you know the whole matrix situation we tend to be really angry because we feel like we've been uh i don't want to say the word that comes to mind uh <laughs> that's kind of funny we've been <laughs> taking care of uh, taking advantage of and so we're pissed and we're pissed at the police we're pissed at the army we're pissed at the uh, representatives and, and we just you know want to hang him by the balls and all this stuff so in reality, what I like to tell people is, is something that's not a, an easy pill to swallow. The state of affairs currently in government and in the world at large is a reflection of what's inside of us. So we can, like, we can complain all day long, we can bitch all day every day about how fucked up things are all the time, but nothing will ever change unless we do the inner work to be better people. So I've been teaching this stuff for probably 10 years now, you know, and, and, and it's really surprising now to see that uh, people are, are, are ready, you know, they want this. They're like, okay, I've screamed for years and nothing changes. Let's hear you out, you token Mexican friend of ours. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where, where I come in and... And, and, you know, like, I mean, we, we, I, we have a great track record of, of helping people. And, you know, like something that I actually was talking to my business partner, because uh, he's known, you know, forever that I'm an anarchist and uh, that I do um, traumatic ceremonies and all that stuff. And, but he's been actually reading books on, on servant leadership written by uh, self-described anarcho-capitalists. Um, and actually, one is kind of local to that part of you know Michigan. 
the guy was a simmer something deli. So mm. this dude, his name is Ari, some Jewish last name. Um, he talks a lot about it and, and my business partner is reading it. And so like the whole idea behind it is like, I mean, there is a lot of good people that are successful, that are, they have big hearts that have gone through the inner journey to realize that that's what it takes to become really successful and to help other people become successful. So in other words, like, you know, whenever you're in, in like a work environment, people tend to be pretty secretive. You know, nobody talks about like um, uh, any kind of knowledge, you know, knowledge is power. You have to keep it to yourself. But what I come and tell people is become transparent and train people to replace you because then you can move up because then you can like make the world a better place. You know, like it's not just about you trying to survive. And I talk about the chakras, you know, like the very, the first chakra is survival instinct. You're, you're not even focused on reproduction yet. You're just focused on survival. And a lot of people tend to spend a lot of time in that one first chakra, like just trying to see, you know, where they're going to get their next meal from or, or pay rent or whatever. So the way to go through that is to really see that there is more than enough. Yes, there's plenty. Like there's not one fixed pie. We can create wealth, especially now that we can create wealth without having to use like actual natural resources. We can make money with freaking services and the computer. We can make, I have a friend that he retired at age 35 making apps on freaking iPhone, you know, like yeah. he had a couple million dollars. So, I mean, the more technologically advanced we become, the easier it is you know, to, to generate and to create instead of having like one fixed pie and you have to go to the next town or village and, you know, steal the resources. I mean, that shit's like troglodyte, you know? So doing the inner journey, doing like, you're here for a purpose. What is your purpose? Find your purpose, then go give it away, you know? And when you do that, like you, side effects of following your purpose is, uh, financial freedom and happiness and energy and health. So it's like ah, really exciting to things, see. Man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and another side effect of that is people that are happy and successful are not trying to ruminate on how to fuck people over or try to rule them. So it's a win-win. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Shane. Oh, I totally agree. And, uh, I, I just wanted to add that uh, this is only the second time I've ever act to actually got to actually speak with Luis. Um, but a couple years ago, I uh, was uh, on a podcast with a friend of mine named John Plasterer, and we had you on as a guest. And that was the first time I got to speak with you. And uh, I know back then we spoke about entheogens and shamanism and all kinds of spiritual stuff. It was a really good talk. Um, but back then, you know, a lot, like you said, a lot of anarchists were going through that sort of angry anarchist phase where they were mad at the world, mad at the government, mad at the cops. But I think there's been a lot more uh, self-work that's been done within the individuals in the community to the point where now they're open to these new ideas of uh, self-work. And I think that's why uh, when your little poll was posted in the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, I think that's why uh, they were overwhelmingly in favor of your inner journey approach. Because um, it reminds me of a quote that I've heard. Uh, it was called, it, it goes, uh, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it really is a lot about perception and the way we interact with the world. So I think this message, uh, the audience is ready for this kind of message. Yeah, we're ripe for it and we need it because, you know, things are getting pretty um, hairy at some level. At other levels, like, I mean, in reality, zooming out, we're in the most prosperous and in, in the most peaceful time on earth. We even have the most trees we've ever had. You can Google that if you don't believe me. So like in, in a lot of... Um, areas of life, and when I say life, I mean like everything that's vibrating, you know, I mean, we're great. But uh, I, I think that because of that, the uh, movers and the shakers, you know, the, the powers of work are actually afraid. And they're actually creating more chaos to discombobulate society into fear. Because when we are not united, it's easier to get us. So, you know, we, we, I mean, if you get out of your house, 
you know, your neighbors are not going to shoot you or like, I mean, you know, I mean, there's different colors, different cultures, well, that, different that, that depends where you live. There's, if, if they were allowed to have guns, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty darn sure a couple of my neighbors would try to take a shot at me, but you know, anyway, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, there, that, that is, that is true. You know, that is true. But for the vast majority, it's not the case. Well, of course, you know? you're right. Of course, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean, shit. Like I, one, my best friend that recently died, he was actually from on Ar- Arbor, Michigan, and like this crazy fuck would just go to Detroit, like on a Saturday night in the middle of the night and walk into rough neighborhoods. And he always came out alive. You know, one time he got punched in the face by this dude that tried to sell him um, meth, and my friend said no. So the dude just punched him, but I mean that. There's a that great is, sales tactic for you. But hey, you want to yeah. buy some meth? No, bam! You sure you don't want to buy some goddamn meth, motherfucker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like the point I'm trying to make, like for, even in the rough places, you can be fine. And so, like, I mean, the whole idea of focus and tunnels of reality, and what Shane was saying is actually really powerful because. Um, every person sees outside of themselves what they carry in their hearts. So, like, for people that are always, like, saying, oh, life sucks, or this is awful, whatever, that's only a reflection of what's in their hearts, what's in their history, what the stories that they keep telling themselves. You know, there's something, like, I really, really love that we do for work, and it's for, like, uh, burnt-out executives. And they're, like, you know, victim mentality galore and whatever. So we tell them, okay, tell me your story, your life story as if you were a huge victim and you know like oh yeah i suffer and this and that okay i want you to tell me that same story of your life as if you were the hero of that story you know exactly the same person the same things happen but it's just how you choose to see what happened to you you know so that's that's the tunnel of reality and and it's not like lying to yourself or just like deceiving yourself is like really like this shit happens and you can actually overcome, like actually the, the blockages that you have in life, that's the path that you have to go through to be able to realize who you really are. And who you really are is this cosmic entirety that there are no words for. So whenever you're able to see that, you grow, you level up, you know? Like life doesn't get easier, you get better, you get faster, you get stronger, you get smarter. So, I mean, it's it's a video game in itself and, and it gets funner whenever you realize that you can be in control, you know, for the most part. Oh, sure. And uh, yeah, it's funny because as, as you were talking about that, I was thinking, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that that was me I, I, for the longest time, like the, per, the perpetual pessimist and uh, just like everything, you know, every, everything's wrong. It's always somebody else's fault. And I was actually having a, a conversation earlier today with a friend of the show, Paul Gordon. And uh, I actually was discussing something with him and he, he took my idea and ran with it about doing like a, a daily vlog to kind of like we were talking about the whole idea of this self-awareness and how, you know, with all the BS that continues to go on um, just in the world, you know, in all, all the different communities, including our own, like the Liberty and Anarchist communities, and like you see it every year. I mean, Shane, you mentioned earlier the, uh, you know, the angry anarchist phase that a lot of people were in. I mean, that's a perpetual cycle, unfortunately, like every time new people come to the movie. Movement, a whole bunch of them end up in that phase for a while. Um, so it, it keeps happening. Um, but the people we knew back then, there, there's a small group of them that have become, a, a, a have really latched onto the whole idea of like self-awareness and self-knowledge and actually trying to understand these things about themselves and realize, you know, what what you do have the power, what you are capable of doing and how, you know, there, there are, you know, I, there's something I've said often is, you know, especially because, you know, we were talking about the whole idea of you know, this type of stuff leading towards more freedom is, uh, you know, I, I've said the, you know, the biggest, the biggest impediment to your own freedom is, is almost is you in almost all circumstances. It's you. You, you know, you absolutely so, you know, you have to get over that. And for somebody like me, uh, you know, I did something a very specific way for a very long time and just uh, with a lot of things in my life. And uh, it took me a long time to break out of that. And when I first became an anarchist, uh, I thought I had found all the answers and I beca- I didn't really change. I had new ideas and I had certain words to help define ideas I had had previously but didn't fully understand, but I didn't really grasp everything because I wasn't really fixing the things that were wrong with me. I was just jumping to a new set of ideas and saying, oh, this is the one. Now I have all the answers. Now I don't need to seek anymore. And everybody else who doesn't agree with this, what I, how I feel now is an idiot. 
and uh, and it didn't get much better. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I took a step back and said, uh, yeah, I've been I've been going about this all wrong. And I really started to look more into myself and trying to realize, you know, that's I, I became a big fan of uh, the stoic philosophy and trying to really only focus on things that I have control over. Um, but like you said, once you start doing that, you realize that you actually can control a lot more than you think you can. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, it's all absolutely. about but perceptions are a really big part of it. And I, I love the fact that both of you mentioned that because um, so many people, you know, especially in the anarchist, more so I guess in the ANCAP communities or anybody who falls in like the very logical objectivist type time type uh, uh, thing, they're all you know they, they they kind of forget about reality a lot of times. I've said this a lot, and it's like no, like and and whether you're right or wrong, perception shapes reality. And if everybody else's perception of you is that you're an idiot, it doesn't matter if you're right. You're not going to get very far. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I have a, a little opinion on that that's actually kind of rough to say. But I want to say that a lot of people that actually get into um, anarchy and uh, voluntarism and all of that, either in you know, whichever camp, they do so because they feel so disempowered and they want to blame somebody for their inadequacies or lack of success or lack of motivation, whatever. Oh, it's the government. That's why I can't do shit. Well, that's actually, you know, just a scapegoat and like blaming your parents or blaming whatever, you know, like, and it, that's sad to see. So I, I am hopeful that, you know, once people see this, whole inner journey, inner work situation, they can realize that, you, you know, you can, you, regardless of the fact that there is a state, you can still be successful in the world. Like, I think Harry Brown wrote a book called uh, How to Live Free in a Non-Free World. And, uh, you know, Robert uh, Han Han I can pronounce his last name, talks also about the idea, like, I am free no matter what rules surround me. If the rule is uh, you know, whatever, I'll follow it. If the rule is obnoxious, I won't. So, you know, that that idea that, the, the, I mean, yeah, the state sucks. You know, like, we don't like it. And, and, and it really, like, ruins any kind of thing that resembles fun or profitable. But that doesn't mean that that stops us from succeeding, you know? Yeah, right on. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, the, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's funny. I, I, I've been saying, uh, some of the similar things like that, cause that actually falls in line with, you know, my whole approach again, that has kind of morphed over the past couple of years, ever since I took a step back and kind of, uh, rethought a lot of things. Uh, you know, my whole, you know, even as far as like, you know, take activism, for example, you know, the whole approach I went from, you know, the whole, uh, going from a civil disobedience approach and and just going for, to a straight up no non-compliance and exactly like what you were talking about just like yeah if you find a law obnoxious or whatever or like if it's a victimless crime like yeah you break those whenever you get the opportunity to as far as I'm concerned I mean obviously yes every situation like that you have to take a you have to do a risk uh, benefit analysis and and realize you know what's the chances of you getting caught blah 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 and all these things but yeah like and just live your life as free as you possibly can that's all that's what i'm all about that's what i've been trying to do for the past couple of years that's the whole reason that i'm picking my family up and you know finally getting the heck out of new york and and moving and starting a new life so we can start doing stuff like that um and just you know focusing more on just being free now um, because it's not, you know, a couple of years back, a couple of years before that, I, I, I accepted the fact that we're, we're most likely not going to see the full scale freedom that I would like to see in my lifetime as I'm starting to get on in years, but I came to peace with that. But then I realized, okay, but I could still get free now and I could still get my family freer now. And that's what I focus on. So yeah, I'm, I, I, I love all this stuff. Cause like I said, it, it falls in line with every, everything I'm doing. So uh, I'm I'm even more like uh, like I said I was excited to finally meet you in the first place but now now I'm even more excited to hear you talk. <laughs> and, uh, I Thank hope, you. I'm I hope, excited I, to meet you guys. I, I hope more people uh, latch onto this and you know I. I, I I made the joke before about the uh, confused anarchist, but of course, I mean, the reason I am willing to drive uh, 11 and a half hours to go to this thing for now the third year in a row when I could just drive five or six hours up to Porkfest instead, 
um, is because I like the people out there a lot more, and they are more a lot uh, more open to ideas like this uh, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's definitely a great audience for this. But I, I hope on a larger scale that yeah, we definitely see more people doing this. But like you said, you've, you're seeing it in, in your work, which is great because obviously you've been doing this for quite a while, and it's since I've known you. You've been able to travel pretty freely to do all these things on a regular basis. So you must be doing decently well for yourself. So obviously it's it's success like you when you said you were successful before, like the proof is there. Like you've you've been doing this long enough and you keep getting paid to keep <laughs> for people to keep paying you to do it again. So obviously it's it must be working. So if more people are getting interested in this, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, like we we are not cheap, you know. I mean, we we provide excellent an excellent product, and and people actually make a whole lot more money, and they're happier. I mean, just think about it. Like a lot of people really hate their jobs, you know. Like, and I I well, use the people, word jobs. I would, I would say most people hate their jobs. The like the majority of people definitely hate their jobs. <laughs> and that's actually really poopy, right? Absolutely. Now, uh, what I what I uh, it, but see, there's this thing they blame. Uh, the whole idea of having to work or, you know, I just want uh, one part of the population. Oh, I just wish I didn't have to work or whatever. So, I mean, okay, even if you didn't work, you know, you would still have to create shelter. You would still have to find apples to eat. And I mean, to me, that's even more difficult, you know, like having to f just, you know, be outside with the mosquitoes and snakes and, and the heat and the rain and having to make a, a freaking mud hut that, gets destroyed every time it rains like screw that you know i mean i'm able to generate much more money by like actually helping and serving others so that, that that's one part of population the other one's like i hate my job because you know my supervisor sucks or because i don't get in, like enough uh opportunity or whatever uh so what we do in that case uh is like we actually turn the pyramid of power upside down and the, the supervisor the leader the boss is not somebody that's just barking orders from the top of the pyramid. The supervisor is actually somebody that removes obstacles so the worker can do their job. Because if you got hired, that means that you probably know how to do what you're supposed to be doing. So you don't really need a nanny to be breathing on your neck. So that that empowers the employee to be more responsible and to, to take more on and they make more money. And then the supervisor is not having to freaking worry about having to babysit people. You know, you, they don't get paid to babysit people. They can get paid to actually do higher level work, you know. And then there's the leadership pipeline, you know, supervisor, mid-level, um, business unit manager, executive, whatever. And there's different skills that we teach to every level. So, I mean, that, that, that a lot of people say, oh, shit, I, I hate corporations, whatever. I'm in them day in and day out. And they're actually amazing most of them i mean yeah there's a lot of shit going on but the real issue i think is um the, the there's a lot of anti-business rhetoric that gives uh you know corporations or whatever bad name like i went to uh conscious capitalism ceo conference you know from john mackey the whole foods guy and there were 201 ceos and i was there with you know it was like the chipotle guy the whole foods guy trader joe's and all these dudes and the whole thing is like how can we make the world a better place? You know, that was their, th that was what they were trying to think and, and scheme, you know, like they were actually, oh, the saying, horror, Those the, evil the government bastards. sucks. <laughs> How can we make roads? How can we make schools? How can we make parks? Like these guys are getting to a level of spiritual quotient where they realize their connection with everything else. So they want to, to they want to be stewards of the planet. So, like, what, what's coming now is, is you're not just a business with a mission. Now, like, the twist is going to be people are going to be a mission with a business. Like, this client that I just came back from Houston to help them, like, their, their freaking goal is to end genocide in the world. And they're an investment management firm, dude. I mean, That's a lofty you know? goal, but that's, great. that's a great one. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for that. These are like the guys that are actually putting towers in Africa trying to go after Conan. And they've actually liberated a ton of uh, children's soldiers. And I mean, shit, like they spend half of their profits for that purpose. So, I mean, that is amazing. And there's a lot of people like that. So, I mean, you know, once you get to the idea of living through purpose, 
uh, then you're not just going for a job that you hate. You actually wake up energized and you say, I'm changing the world, you know? I'm, 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 I'm it, just putting my, my contribution into the bank account of humanity. And so, like, your awareness goes from me to us to all of us because you see the interconnectedness in of everything. And it's, this is something really funny because, like, again, back to the chakra thing, a lot of people are, like, really afraid and they don't want to give out a lot, you know, not very... Uh, open, but w the more you give, the more you get, and you don't give necessarily to get, but it's a freaking boomerang. Anything that you put out comes back at you. So, like, you know, being really generous with your time, with your resources, giving more, like, you know, uh, as much as you can for a dollar of service or product, you're going to get business galore, you know? So, I mean, we, we teach all those things, and uh, it's it's extremely exciting to see how we're actually changing the world for better, like creating balance, but not like the guy from um, Infinity Wars, like he's destroying everybody. Now we're like, you know, the opposite. We're we're creating, uh, we're creating basically. Yeah, that's awesome. I really love that uh, quote where you said it was a mission with a business, because uh, it you know it reminds me of the difference between just working a job and actually doing your life's work. And I do think that's a big part of where self-knowledge comes in. Uh, the more you know yourself and what you love, uh, the more you can do what you love. And it reminds me of another quote that says, uh, do what you love and the money will come. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big difference between you know, just doing something for money and doing something because you're passionate about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. And absolutely. Like, you know, I think that uh, we all are at some point in time where like we do things just for money and i mean there's nothing wrong with that as a matter of fact that's where the free market excels you know like it it, it alleviates and helps people out of poverty that they couldn't have done it otherwise you know like i mean there's people that say well shit you know uh, i want to be fully self-sustainable well that only leads to uh, abject poverty because imagine, like, you have to make your chairs, you have to make all these, like, real true wealth comes from spe specialization of whatever, you know, uh, thing that you're doing. Um, so, like, if you make chairs and I make something, we can trade and we get better. Like, you're not spending all, the, all your time just on survival. So, all of these people actually get jobs and, you know, they're, they're able to send money back to their homes and um, the standard of living grows. And, and <clears throat> if everything goes at, with the same tra trajectory as it is going right now, we can actually end abject poverty by 2030. Like, think about that for a second. Like, m maybe even before that, my grandkids will ask me about stuff like, what is poverty, you know? Because they're only going to be able to see that in, like, the History Channel or, or freaking YouTube. You know, that shit's going to, like, disappear because it's already disappearing. Like, poor people in the United States wear michael jordan shoes and they have flat screen tvs and they're oh, fat absolutely yeah the as far like the whole world you know wor worldwide on the po you know poverty scale they're definitely you know even you know outside of the, the states there's you know the people are still poor yes but the standard of living for almost everybody has been raised incredibly you know over the past what 150 125 whatever it is since the revolution since the industrial revolution but uh but 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 like you said or you know tying with what you said earlier about the whole technology thing yeah it, that's just speeding up so absolutely these things can and uh once again it, you know these type of things you know ridding poverty uh, obviously by by picking a date yeah lofty goal but you're right it is possible and uh why not strive through that um, and, uh, that's, uh, that's a, that's a great point to unfortunately end on. I'm just looking at the clock. I know you have to get out of here soon, but, uh, I mean, I would love, I would love to keep going with this, but, uh, I don't want to keep you any longer, but, uh, before I have a little more time. That's okay. fine. My, my wife just told me I have 10 more minutes. Oh, I have to go well, get my daughter here in a minute. Oh, thank Well, I, I th th thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Uh, t tell the missus that uh, we, we appreciate the extended time, but yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, but yeah, we, we you know, it's, it's, it's right though. It's, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I lost where I was going with that because I thought we were going to end the show uh, <laughs> or at least kick you out. <laughs> um, I can go. The, That's no, fine. No, the, Bye. The, 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 no, no, no. The, the, the other point you brought up before the, about the whole corporations thing, I think is a very important one, too, because just in general, uh, it, they do get a bad rap because there are 
some unscrupulous individuals who run some of the bigger corporations who take full advantage of the government and and what they you know the the protections they receive from that and uh, then people just go oh anybody who's a corp you know corporations are evil it's like well for a while i was a corporation like with my little you know my little private you know my little small my little small business i incorporated myself you know so like am i a horrible human being too i mean well okay that that, that may be a separate issue maybe, maybe i'm a bad example anyway moving on uh- <laughs> i don't think that's a bad example because <laughs> I actually bring that up to people. That was a self that was a self deprecating joke at myself. Um, But but no, no, go ahead. What were you going to (laughs) say? Well, I mean, that that, like whenever somebody tells me that corporations are evil and they should be banned, that like just screams of ignorance to me. Because, like you said, you know, like just single individuals can be corporations. Does that make them evil? You know, so there's something to be. said about the idea that like this like i was telling you uh, anti-business rhetoric because like i mean here's here's something that i really like i mean I'm, I'm gonna try to see if i can explain it good there is a group of people that come from old money and they do all the right things all the right work and you know they, they get passed on you know whatever monies and 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 uh titles and whatever and then they see normal people like me and you and and everybody that is listening suddenly succeeding and becoming wealthier and knowledgeable you know and they're like how dare them they're just like commoners if you will so like somebody maybe you know i'm not as smart as they are i don't have doctor's degrees and all of that fancy stuff so i've noticed that there's a lot of uh uh hate coming from the intelligentsia towards um you know, normal people, and, and, and even more so, you know, the, the whole hate towards Bitcoin as well, because it's actually brought a lot of people that, you know, maybe they don't have enough education, maybe they don't have enough uh, etiquette or whatever, some like, you know, asperous individual suddenly is rich and doesn't have to work. And these guys are like, I mean, because I've, I, when I talk to people sometimes, they're like, how dare you, you little 34-year-old immigrant you know, how, why do you, I've had to work all my life for my money. How, how, why do you have this money? You know? how, how dare you be, how dare you be smarter or lucky, like luckier or whatever, like whatever they want to chalk it up to. But how dare you be either of those things, which is just insane that anybody would be mad at you for either being lucky. Like, how could you be like, how could you be, you know, that's completely out of your control or, or, or just being smarter. Um, with your money and doing things like how can people be mad? Well, I mean, obviously, I I know people do. But like, when you think about it, it's like, just insane. (laughs) Yeah. And and that's, I think, where like a lot of the uh, and actually John Mackey from Whole Foods, uh, he started talking about that, too. And I was like, oh, shit. So I'm not crazy. I'm not just imagining things, you know, like this dude that sold his business for thirteen point seven billion dollars has something to say about that, too. So, you know, there's probably something in there. Um, but that, that I've noticed a lot of that. So that, that's, um, you know, people don't like these, this, this group of individuals, they don't want the rest of us to succeed and to be free. And, and, you know, like they, they still have that, uh, mentality of, of, uh, I guess elite, you know, uh, so, and, and so many levels and layers working on here, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's very interesting, uh, how that works. And a lot of people actually believe it. And they just keep doing it to other generations. You know, when you go to work and they're like, oh, I had to do all this shitty work when I started. So you have to do it too. Sometimes that shitty work doesn't even make sense anymore. Why do we have to do the same thing? You know, like right. life's supposed to be easier every time, every year, every month, you know, funner. And, and like these guys keep like rehashing some stuff that like it's not, it shouldn't be anymore. So anyway, that was a bit of a crazy rant but i mean i i I, there's something interesting there i think yeah and despite that mentality it's actually promising to see those ceos that you spoke of you know taking a sort of stewardship approach towards the earth and um it's it, it seems like they're more focused on um harmony and community than they are on things like you know greed and power which is a very very promising sort of paradigm shift that we're seeing now and um, like I said, uh, the anarchist community is is ripe now for this kind of information to be brought forth into the mainstream. Um, it's just the time is right. And I think timing is everything. And the time is now. 
oh, definitely, the time is now, the time was yesterday, you know? I mean, shit, the time's 100 years ago. But I think there's, uh, like, an interesting play of consciousness and the evolution of mankind. Like, we needed to start, you know, 17... 86, Wealth of the Nations, John Smith, no, it's not John Smith, Adam Smith, you know, like, back then, business was seen as, like, humans were part of the cog of business, like, if you put certain time, uh, raw resources, and human labor, then you get this product. Now, we are not seen as part of a cog, you know, a machine, or whatever, like, we're, we're it, it's, a, it's an organism, a living exactly. organism, and, 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 we're like, I mean, that's that's a paradigm shift that's actually getting really exciting, you know. And what's funny about this is like all the communists that are always bitching about the means of production and all of this stuff. The free market has given us the means of production, you know. Like, and and I mean, think about it. Like, we can get rid of, like, you can be your own hotel, Airbnb, if you will. You can rent the couch. You don't have to have like a huge million dollar investment. You can be your own taxi, you know, Lyft, Uber. You can be your own whatever. You know, there's so many, like, businesses that, that are, like, without centralized, you know, like, I mean, you can be your own thing, whatever the hell you want to be. And that's, like, the future is bright, I think. Yeah. Oh, I would, I agree. Yeah. I, I cannot even imagine what my kids are going to experience when they're, like, it, you know, one thing I tell my kids is like, you know, one day I'm going to be like 80 years old and I'm going to be biking with you and I'm going to fall off the bike and I'm going to like rip my arm off and I'm just going to walk to 7-Eleven and buy a new one and, and install it right there and then, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, like death will be optional too. So, I mean, that that's kind of crazy to even think about, but I, that that's where we're headed towards. Yeah, I know. And on, on, on some levels, some people could say like certain things, oh, that, like that's just, you know, pipe dreams. That'll never happen. And because like there's certain things like I, I remember from like my childhood that were kind of expected to happen by now that haven't. And people just point to that and go, see, we never got there. But then like when you actually sit and realize like what actually has happened in those in that short in that relatively short time frame, uh, you know, considering the grand scope of things, it's insane. And it is only getting faster. Like everything just continues to get faster and faster and faster. So yeah, like we were saying, like I was saying earlier, you know, these type of things they are they are definitely now within the realm of possibility. Where you know maybe even twenty, thirty years ago, they sounded great and they 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 were you know far off dreams. But now it's like they're so much closer, and it just again it. You know, if, as long as people don't keep getting in their own goddamn way, <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> uh, because, like I said, we you know that you know we use whatever cliche you want. You're your own worst enemy. Blah blah blah. All that stupid shit. It's what it is, man. People keep you know. And uh, yeah, are there bad people out there? Yes, but there's plenty more people that are good. And with the with the advances of technology and the the ability for these things to get in more hands. And as you were, as you were talking about earlier, like, you know, the goal of trying to er eradicate uh, abject poverty altogether, even if it's not reached, like the fact that we're even talking about that as a, as a, you know, real possibility is just insane. If you go back just even a hundred years, you know, like, you know, so talk about how things speed up. It's just, uh, I I'm, I'm, a, I'm, as, as much crap as I've had to deal with, especially over the past year, I am still ecstatic that I live in this time frame. And I am absolutely like, I can't, like you were talking about, I can't imagine what my kids are actually going to be. My, my great, not even my grandkids, my kids. By the time they're, uh, you know, in their 20s and 30s, I have no idea what they're going to be dealing with at that point. And, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> the future is bright. Yeah. Absolutely. If we let it. Yeah. Like I said. As long as we don't get in our own goddamn ways, we'll be fine. <laughs> yep, I agree. Well, I'm actually very excited to get to see you guys at the Midwest Liberty Fest, and I hope that whomever's listening to this, and you know, hopefully they'll they'll go make it, and, and we can hang out and, and talk liberty. Yeah, yeah. Well, this I look forward to meeting you and hanging out and partying with you too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, is it true that the bathrooms are kind of nasty? 
no, I don't think so. The uh, well, see, I don't know. There's a couple of different bathrooms. I deal with the one uh, last year, at least. I dealt with the one on the far end of the camp, like a, the furthest thing away from all the uh, activity. <laughs> um, and that one was relatively clean. The one, the one closest to the campfire can get a little uh, nasty after a while. Um, but it's camping. Well, what, are we, what are you going to well, do? It, the mud and sand gets tracked in there. Exactly. And, uh, some, yeah, but the other bathroom actually is a little bit nicer than that one is. So you just have to walk a little bit farther. Yeah, the one down. You know, by, I'm gonna... the one down by the entrance. That's where I because that's where I camp last year. Because my kids, I had to be near. I had to be near a bathroom for them, so it just made it easier. That's a good idea. I'm gonna get a five gallon bucket from Home Depot and, and a floating noodle, and just make me a toilet. See, that's funny. I actually have a five-gallon bucket, and I already have the toilet seat. I talked about this on one of my recent vlogs because it's actually part of the things, some of the things I purchased for my uh, my upcoming experience of living out of my car once my house sale, uh, my the sale of my house is finally complete uh, a week from today, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, that's not a bad idea. I, I you know, five five-gallon bucket does you wonders, people. So well, it's a very uh, self-sustainable, I guess, approach. But it, the, the good bathroom really is only about a maximum of five-minute walk, depending on where you camp. Um, you could even camp closer to that bathroom, but then uh, the party would be a farther walk at that point. Yeah, well, you know, again, risk-benefit analysis, man. You know, <laughs> you got <laughs> you got you to add that in. You you want to you want to deal with a cleaner bathroom? Well, then you know, maybe put your campsite a little further away and deal with the fact that you have to walk to the party. I did it last year. It's not that bad. You'll get over it. Uh, Every decision is an economic decision. Exactly. Ooh, that's true. Very true. But uh, on that note, we're, uh, we're uh, we should probably let you go because uh, we I, I don't want to take any more advantage of your time, especially because the missus was so nice to give us ten extra minutes. So, uh, Luis, before you get going, though, first of all, thanks you again for uh, finally finally being able to get on with us. It's been great. It's, it's been so good to talk to you. Definitely looking forward to finally getting to meet you. But uh, do you have anything else you want to say in closing? And do you want to have anything you want to plug before you before we get going? Yeah, no, I'm just like super grateful because like, you know, we've been trying to do this for so long. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and and all of that stuff. So it's, uh, I'm happy that it finally happened. And if anybody's interested in like looking me up, like literally you can just Google Luis Fernando Misses and you're going to find a bunch of good stuff. Uh, I also, I'm with uh, my, my, my gig, you know, Emancipated Human. Um, actually, you know, Facebook, uh, that's, that's a huge old different story slash show. But find me on uh, Facebook, Luis Random Misses, or emancipatedhuman.com. And I'm also on Steam it as Emancipated Human. So, um, yeah, happy to, to be here with you guys. Excellent. Well, the pleasure was all ours. Yeah, this was, uh, this was great. Uh, Shane, do you, have, uh, do you have anything you want to say in closing, my man? Uh, well, um, I just want to say that um, Luis has kind of been a, a big influence on me over the last few years. Um, if it wasn't for people like him and Danilo, who knows what kind of path I might have taken. So I just want to thank him for uh, keeping me you know, spiritually aware and uh, helping keep me on that uh, path. So, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, that doesn't mean that we're like all holy and whatever. Like, I mean, being human means that you're going to be human. You know, like you, you really are yourself. It's not like ultra spiritual stuff that you always have to go to sleep at nine and not drink and all that. No, that's not what it's all about. I agree. All right. Well, uh, Luis, we, we, we'll let you go get going then, man. I, I have a few things I got to say before we close out the show anyway. So uh, I'll let you, awesome. sign, let you sign off if you have to. But thanks again, man. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see you in about a month. <laughs> All right. See you guys. All right. All right. Take care. Bye. You too. All right. Well, that was great, and uh, like he said, I'm I'm so glad we finally we really him and I really have we've we've been messaging each other back and forth on Telegram for months now, to finally trying to set this up to either do this show or my show, Abolition Subtractions, um, and just the timing just never works out. So when he just happened to message, like he happened to comment on my AA show that I put out this morning, um, and it was like. Hey, uh, I could do a show on Thursday. But, although he didn't realize today was Thursday um, when he said that, he's like, "I could, I could do this Thursday." I'm like, "Oh, tonight, great, let's come on." He's like, "Oh, yeah, we could do it." So uh, that was great. <laughs> um, uh, either way, that was that was a lot of fun. And I'm definitely glad uh, we got him on here. Yeah, it was good to finally speak to him again after so long because um, I've been friends with him for years. Uh, spoke to him once a couple years ago, and uh, really all of our interactions have been online until now. So it's good to talk to him again, and I really look forward to seeing him again or seeing him for the first time at the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that too. Um, oh, I guess if if you're not if you, if you're not in the uh, and fam Telegram group, I should add you because that's where he is, and then you could talk to him directly, and then uh, uh-huh. know, start pri- start private chats with him like I do. Like I, you know, him and I, have, him and I have a chat going. But yeah, I should add you to that group. Anyway, I was not aware of that. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's actually one of the few people that that keeps up on all this on the, all the vlogs I put out and stuff and my court updates and stuff. So I really appreciate that. Uh, Luis is a great guy. Like I said, I've I've known I've known him for like three or four years now online. And uh, finally, now definitely psyched uh, about uh, getting to meet. So yeah, once again, we've mentioned it a couple times. Um, by the time this one comes out, you will still have time to purchase tickets. Uh, we are still one week ahead currently. Uh, although, as we've mentioned uh, for the past couple of weeks, after this episode right here, whenever we you know when you guys finally get to hear this one, things may get a little difficult. We're going to try to pack another episode or two in before I actually have to move out. But since we're recording this on what's today, the 24th. So yeah, we're recording this on the 24th. Uh, come next Thursday, our normal recording day, I will actually already be out of this house because uh, the closing happens at one o'clock on the 31st. So I won't have a place to record. I won't have the house to record from. And uh, we're going to have to figure out what we're doing going forward. Um, but we, you know, we've warned you guys about this. Um, but if for some reason there aren't episodes coming out on a regular basis after this one comes out, uh, please remember that, uh, I, I will do my best to keep at least a f- little mini filler episodes in there. So you guys don't forget about us. And also you can always check out the other content we go have going on. Uh, Dave and Andre have multiple times promised me other content. More so Dave than Andre. Um, and Andre has a kid, so as always, I'll give him a break. Dave, uh, not so much. And uh, <laughs> he just still hasn't provided me anything. But uh, in case you haven't been, you can always follow my stuff that's going on because I have a bunch of uh, I have my vlogs. Go- you know, I have my other show that I do. Um, that will still be going on because if nothing else, I can always put out a solo episode once I'm living out of my car. Um, like I said, just recording with these guys may be a little bit more difficult unless I can get somebody else to record. Uh, but we'll figure that as we go along and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, but it'll be interesting. But anyway, yeah, like my, like I said, my stuff, there'll always be plenty of content, uh, through the seeds of Liberty channel. So you can always get other content. Um, if, if the show isn't actually going on, but we will do our best. I'm gonna, definitely going to try to do some guerrilla podcasting and figure out a way for us to, uh, still record and still put out at least every other week at the, you know, absolute minimum. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, yeah. yeah. Don't pod fade me, bro. Yeah, we're definitely not pod fading. This is uh, only because, you know, I have to I have to work things out for a little bit. But as I've mentioned multiple times before, if my buddy and uh, guest, a uh, former guest on this show, Kyle Turnblazer, can uh, can pull this off in his big rig for every podcast he does. I'm pretty sure I can figure this out. Just give me a little time and uh, we'll work. We'll work out all the kinks. So. All right. So once again, this is, it was a lot of fun to have Luis on, and uh, we, we do thank him for, for joining us tonight. Thank you, everybody else, for listening. This has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org or at steamit.com slash at Seeds of Liberty. Um, although all the new episodes do go up on my personal page, uh, my personal steam it, uh, cause we're still, we still got the backlog going up on the seeds page, but you can go check us out there if you, if you haven't already. Um, and that's another good way to always, you know, always another good way to donate to us, especially if you're somebody who has a lot of steam. Um, <laughs> if you don't feel like actually giving us money, upvote and re-steam our stuff, man. It helps. Every little bit helps. Um, but anyway, yeah, of course, uh, everybody, uh, if you haven't are also already, please uh, consider consider going to check out our Patreon. It's still only a dollar a month for the weekly episodes that come out. And if you happen to want to donate more, which a couple of people have been uh, so wonderful in doing, uh, there are a couple of other options uh, further up the ladder where you can get some more bonus uh bonus content uh if you uh, donate a little more but uh, like i said at the very least dollar a month gets you at least four episodes so you know a quarter an episode that's not really a bad deal and uh other things like our amazon link and uh, any other ways to donate us donate to us will be in the show show notes so anyway once again this has been the seeds of liberty podcast and we will catch you next time peace peace Thank you.
This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon, and I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.